One study of the feeding habits of varroa mites, an important pest of honeybees, received disproportional media attention around the globe when Dr. Samuel Ramsey, now an assistant professor at the University of Colorado Boulder, and collaborators discovered that varroa mites feeds primarily on the fat bodies of honeybees rather than the hemolymph. This was a very important discovery that shifted our understanding about the biology of this parasite, opening not only many doors for further research, but also gave many beekeepers hope that potential new solutions against these terrible mites would one day come. As a scientist myself, I was super happy with the findings, but I was also surprised by the reaction of the general public regarding these findings. Dr. Ramsey clearly demonstrated that varroa mites primarily feeds on the fat bodies of adult honeybees. One important fact is that Dr. Ramsey's experiments did not address the other life stages of honeybees. This raises questions about the possibilities of things being different in those stages. As a science educator, Every time I try to educate people about this possibility and encourage them to keep an open mind, I received a reaction that I had never seen before in my career. I received even hate emails. In today's video, we explore a new scientific publication that demonstrates that the feeding habits of varroa mites are more complex than we initially expected. Hi, I'm Dr. Umberto Bon Cristiani, and this is Inside the Hive.tv, the show that takes you into the world of peace. A week ago, scientists from China and Canada published a scientific article in which they raised more questions about the feeding habits of varroa mites and tropilaleps, another important mite affecting honeybees. Dr. Sammy Ramsey had previously demonstrated, through elegant experiments, that the primary food source for mites is the fat bodies of adult bees, but the article never addressed all life stages of the honeybees. The body of a honeybee pupa is very different from adult bees. In adults, the fat bodies are concentrated in a sheet of tissue underneath the abdominal cuticle. In pupae, however, the fat body is diffused in the hemolymph that fill the body cavity during the remodeling and formation of adult tissues. Therefore, it is reasonable to assume that the mite might change its diet accordingly depending on the life stage of the honeybees they are parasitizing. To complement the results of Dr. Ramsey, the researchers first looked at the feeding site's preference of varroa mites on pupae, not adult bees, and found out that the sternites of the second abdominal segment is the major feeding site of the varroa mite founders. However, it is known that there is little fat bodies in that region, which led the researchers to think that varroa mites might be feeding on something else, perhaps hemolymph instead. Using artificial diet with special markers, red marking for fat bodies and green marking for hemolymph, the researchers were able to show that varroa mites in the reproductive phase feed on primarily on hemolymph. Let me show you. On A, we have two pupae. The left one was fed with no markers in her diet, and the right one was fed with markers for both fat bodies and hemolymph in her diet. In B, we see the same two pupae under the microscope, configured to see only red markers, which in this case is the fat bodies. What we can see here is that the pupae fed with no markers is not showing anything, validating the negative control, while the one on the right is showing how much fat body is in that pupae. In C, we can see the same set of pupae, but now we can only see the green channel, that is the marker for the hemolymph. Now in D, we can see both markers combined, showing this yellowish coloration, which is the ratio between red, fat bodies, and green, hemolymph. When the researchers quantified the markers, they found out that there is a little bit more hemolymph than fat bodies in the pupil sample, as you can see in this graph. Now, here is where things get more interesting. The researchers let varroa mites on various life stages, protonymph, deltonymph, and foundress, to feed on pupae fed with the markers. If what people were saying is correct and varroa mites only feed on fat bodies, we were supposed to expect that inside the varroa mites' bodies to find a lot of the red markers, but what they found was very surprising. 
In overall mites' life stages feeding on pupae, some fat bodies were consumed by these mites. However, the great majority of the food source came from hemolymph, as you can see here in green. And when the researchers quantified the markers, it became clear that the ratio between fat bodies and hemolymph ingested was much higher than the, what was found previously on the control pupa. But some people might be asking themselves, maybe they are consuming hemolymph in high quantities to get as much fat bodies diluted in there. And the reality is that the mites are not using the hemolymph as a food source. That is a reasonable question that could change the whole story here. And that's also why we need proper controls in those experiments. That's why the researchers also measured the ratio between hemolymph and fat bodies on the feces of the mites. If the mites were digesting fat bodies preferably, the ratio would be different from what was found previously on the mite bodies, which was not the case here. The researchers also took a proteomic approach to compare the protein profile of mites feeding on pupae versus mite feeding on adult bees. And long story short, they also found strong evidence that varroa mites have different feeding habits depending on the life stage of the honeybees they're feeding on. The proteomic approach is quite interesting and you can hear all about it on my podcast where I interviewed Dr. Oliver Ruppel, one of the authors of this publication. Dr. Ruppel also talked about the feeding behaviors of Tropila Labs, another important mite feeding on honeybees. Link in the description of this video. Now you have, my friends, varroa mites, based on the information we have so far, feeds primarily on fat bodies, on adult bees, and also primarily on hemolymph when they're feeding on pupae. It is very important that we add this new information in our understanding of the life cycle of varroa mites. Any research to control varroa mites must consider this diet change in order to be fully effective from now on. The sequence of research events related to the feeding habits of varroa mite was very, very fascinating to me. I don't know how people become so attached to this idea of mites feeding exclusively on fat bodies to the point that they become kind of a cult. It was so intriguing to me to see people fighting when you pointed out that there are other possibilities that were not verified or even investigated yet. This whole story is a great example of how science works. Small pieces of the puzzle brought to the table little by little by researchers from all over the world working independently researching the same subject. There are no heroes in these stories. The only real hero is the human species that create the scientific method that allow us to understand the world beyond our senses, protecting ourselves from believing things that are not true. Only time will tell what else is out there. For example, what happens when Varroa feeds on larvae? We don't know for sure yet. So let's keep researching it. I think the main message here is to keep your mind open to new information. When you're not open to new information, it's very easy for you to become radicalized. Especially in biology, things are never black or white, red or blue, you got the point. Do your research and keep your mind open all the time. It is a lot of fun to make these videos and if you see value on them, please consider a small donation or becoming an academy member where you can help me even more and learn in the process. Link in the description of this video. Now watch this video right here where I interview Oliver Ruppel. Thanks for watching. Inside the Hive.tv. The show Bobby's. See you guys next week.